We're in Denver at the Innovative Japanese Garden of Richard and Eleanor Shorter. What caused you to choose to do something like this, to have a beautiful Japanese garden like this? Well, we've always enjoyed the botanical garden, and especially the uh, Japanese area of the garden. So that was um, probably our most important impetus to uh, go ahead with this garden. What do you enjoy most about your garden? We enjoy the opportunity, I guess, to get away from everything. When you go down there, it's, it's very quiet. You don't hear any road noise. Um, it's a very serene atmosphere. It's very calming. And um, it enables us to unwind from the stresses of the day. Watching the fish, just sitting on the bench and watching the fish, and of course feeding them. And we've got them uh, eating out of our hand now. Richard, did you design this yourself? No. Uh, Keith Clark did the design as well as the construction of the garden. Can we go see Keith and talk to him about how he did this? Feel free. He'd love to talk to you. Thank this you. Is very joy. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Keith, this is a beautiful garden you designed. Thank you, here. Curtis. I appreciate that. Wow. And how'd you learn to do something like this? Well, I actually studied uh, landscape architecture in school. Went to Japan for two weeks and looked at all types of uh, gardens in different locations, and uh, got a lot of experience and just knowledge on how to put textures and colors together. It's really nice, and I like this bamboo wall. Uh, How'd you build something like this? Well, this is a fascinating um, experiment that we tried in Denver. Actually brought the bamboo in from Georgia, had it cut, sit in the warehouse for a year to actually kill out, came in, attached it to a concrete wall with two by four behind. And as you notice the uh, string and things, it hides the screws that actually hold that bamboo to the wall itself. Can you show us how you've done that? Absolutely. Let's go look at that. All right. Curtis, I'd like to show you exactly how we put this bamboo and attach it to the wall. Um, you notice there is a two by four behind. I'm as attached to the wall itself. That's correct. And we painted that black so as you see the cracking in the bamboo between the spacing, you don't actually see that white concrete shining out. Mm -hmm. um, each one of these bamboo um, pieces are attached to that with a screw that you can see here, and the twine is wrapped over. So as we construct this, we do one piece at a time, we screw it in, and then we take the twine and wrap them. And we go that whole process all the way around. Looks like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It was literally almost two and a half weeks it's just beautiful. to put the bamboo itself. I notice a lot of interesting plants here. Can we talk about the plants? We sure can. Let's take a look. Okay. I see you've got Japanese maple here and bamboo. The bamboo I really didn't expect at all in Denver, but the Japanese maple is looking good. It's not scorched. Well, Curtis, two things have occurred. We looked for uh, bamboo that was in the same temperate climate that would be in northern Japan. Um, in reference to Japanese maple and scorching in the winter, uh, once a month we come out and do a watering system for all the plant material here. In the winter? In the winter, to make sure that that root system is well hydrated as it goes through, particularly the months of January, February, and March. And we get great growth coming in on, uh, uh, during the season. Did you have problems taking care of this landscape? Yes, we did. There's uh, several problems we had. Number one, uh, the uh, pond itself, because it's so flat down here, it's difficult to actually get the water to move from one pond to the next. So the variance is in the stream itself. And the filter that's down below will actually suck that water from the upper pond and float it down, and then recirculates back up again. And that was one of the things that uh, we had to really be careful when we were constructing the pond itself. It looks nice, though. And the fish are happy. Fish are happy. There's a great filtering uh, system in there. Um, this also gets maintenance on it, usually once or twice um, during the month so that we keep the clarity of water and the fish just go from one pond to the next down that stream. Okay, and do you have uh, climatic or microclimate problems here? Yes, we do. Um, everything that's on uh, this face is basically north facing. Everything against the building is south facing and we had to make a really a change in the type of plant material and how we um, maintain that and how we install that. So you turned it to your advantage. Exactly, absolutely to our advantage. The way a microclimate should be used then. Exactly. Also, we try to choose um, the colorations and the variances in that rock to give us that Japanese feel as close as possible so it matched with the rest of the garden. Great. Thank you for showing us what you've absolutely. done here. Absolutely. Kurt, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure to you. All right.